Hello everyone, Andy Schwab here with your Northern Ag TV. Well, the USDA and the White House hosted a Farmers and Ranchers Action or Inaction event that is earlier this week to roll out several announcements regarding ways that they're promoting fair and competitive markets. One of the steps they said they're taking is issuing an advance notice of proposed rulemaking to seek comments on several possible interventions to develop new benchmarks for base prices. The department ultimately wants to see if there's a better way to enhance price discovery after fielding complaints from producers around beef packers using regionally reported cash and spot prices as the base price for the Fed Cal formula pricing agreements, also known as uh, Alternative Marketing Agreements or A. AMAs. They say the proposed rulemaking aims to mitigate the concern that AMAs have negative price effects on spot market and otherwise distort the trading of fed cattle. Now that event also focused on access of retail reports and seed competition framework which drew criticism from the National Cattlemen's Beef Association as that organization would have rather seen the department discuss ways to help producers facing natural disasters like the wildfires in the west and the hurricanes in the east. And a couple of community events have been announced to gather monetary donations and celebrate the Cowboy State communities. Two of them are actually set for October 19th with a free concert by Trish and Dave Munzik at the Parkman Bar happening on October 19th. That event kicks off at 5 p.m. a week from Saturday with Black Tooth Brewery serving their drink specials and free chicken wings and snacks after 9 p.m. On that same night, just down the interstate in Buffalo, a dinner and dance will also happen at 6 p.m. with live music from Kellen Smith and the Nate Champion Band. That event is called Ashes to the Table Community Dinner, and all those donations go back to the Johnson County Fire Relief Fund. Now, those details are listed on our website's events calendar. And a quick con uh, congratulation that it is goes out to Coleman Angus for another high dollar female sale. The ranch near Charlotte sold their uh, Coleman Donna bread cow, or bread cow that is, with half interest for a whopping $200,000. And all those 119 registered females averaging just over $28,000 each. Of course, more fall production sales will be happening throughout this month, and we'll be sure to keep you up to date on those prices. Speaking of prices, we'll be back in 30 seconds to look over some of your ag markets. From the beginning, we've worked closely with farmers. BNSF's ties to the agricultural community go back 175 years. Together, we've innovated to make the U.S. agriculture supply chain one of the most efficient and productive in the world. Our strong relationship powers BNSF still today and helps us move the nation like no one else can. At BNSF, we move the nation for you. Unfortunately, cattle futures did finally see a small sell-off yesterday as they've enjoyed several weeks of a rally. The pressure on the, or the pressing of the pause button, that is, could have been due to the profit-taking measures after the board climbed above its 100-day moving average on Tuesday. And traders are starting to get a little bit leery of how much support the supply chain is going to offer throughout these fall months. Of course, the fall run of the spring calves is starting to ramp up rapidly as many auction barns are seeing the good tests of four and five weight steers and heifers. For winter livestock in Riverton, steers under the 500 pounds saw price jumps up 12 to 20 cents a pound compared to last week as light four weight steers averaged on the lower end of their full test 351 to 377 hundred weight, while the heavy four weight cowboys found their average at 335 hundred weight, which is closer to the high end of their range that did top out at 355. Now the heifer mates were holding about 30 to 40 cents back on those prices. And on the wheat prices, well, they remain supported by the Black Sea issues, marking a third consecutive day of higher closes. Today's trade, of course, may be a little more cautious as the USDA is set to release her latest World Ag Supply and Demand Estimates report tomorrow morning. However, the timing of that report is a touch less significant as it comes a month after that quarterly stocks and small grain summary. On the row crop front, well, the improved outlook is for better South American weather and it seemed to have been just at least momentarily priced into the markets as corn and soybeans finally found their footing yesterday. Well, that's going to do it for our ag markets on here on Northern Ag TV. I'm Andy Schwab. Have a great rest of your day.